Hey, how's it going? We're back in the church building, so that's exciting. We're going to pick it up in Acts chapter 4 and read verses 23 through 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So let's go back to verse 23. Now, the context of these verses was uh, Peter and John going and they, they healed uh, that guy, uh, they couldn't walk and he was jumping around in a, a super exciting moment. And then uh, after that, they ended up uh, getting seized um, and they were before the, the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees. And eventually they end up getting released. And so now that's where we pick it up in verse 23 on their release. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. So then you see this really cool prayer um, about a bunch of things that have kind of happened. And then verse 29, really neat verse. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And so they've been threatened like, hey, don't preach the word of God anymore. Don't do it. And I think it's so neat that after their release, one of the first things they do to go, uh, to go pray, they go to pray and then they pray for boldness. They don't let that fear get a foothold, but they go immediately and they go pray. I think that is such a good and valuable thing if we can put that into our lives. I did a similar thing like that uh, when I would go snowboarding. One of the things that I would do is if I would um, go off a jump or something like that, uh, go off a rail and then I do it and then I get hurt. I always try to not end the day like that because if I ended the day like that where I did a jump, I, I failed and then it kind of hurt the the fear of it would build up that next time I would go on that jump I'd kind of be a little bit afraid of it and so I wouldn't necessarily have to succeed where I would say land a, a jump or something like that but it would have to be where I went and did it and I didn't get hurt by doing it and so I felt like by doing that then I didn't let that fear get a foothold that I could immediately go back and conquer it before I even let it build up at all and I think it's the same thing in these verses if we go out and evangelize to somebody and it doesn't work and maybe they're mean to us or something like that let's immediately go and pray for boldness and let's kick out that fear before it has any chance to get a foothold and then let's go at it and let's get it again let's go do it again and not let that uh, fear get a foothold awesome awesome verses uh, that we see there in verse 29 then verse 30, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. I think too, if we're, if we're preaching, if we're evangelizing, if we're doing ministry, obviously we want to be praying for our ministry. We want, we want to be praying for God to be doing those miracles and to be performing those signs as well. Good stuff. Verse 31, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You see this kind of thing happen also in like Acts chapter 16 with Paul and Silas in the jail and the place where they uh, they were worshiping then in that jail it was shaken. You see this kind of thing happen sometimes at, uh, uh, in this early, in the early church where they were praying and they're praying after they were just threatened to stop preaching and they're praying and like God is so pleased with them that he just shakes the whole place and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And you see then uh, the answer to prayer there spoke the word of God boldly. And so God honored that. And he said, you're praying for boldness. I'm going to give you that boldness. So how can we apply these verses? I would say let's stay bold and just go a little bit outside of your comfort zone today and don't let that fear build up too because it can be so easy to think, man, I can't do it or 
who am I for God to use me? God should use somebody else. The reality is, is God does want to use you and he uses us in different ways, but there's going to be some way that God wants to use you. So let God use you and let God grow you in that and keep your boldness and don't let fear get a foothold. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you so much and thank you so much for this example here of to go and pray after they've had threats against them to stop preaching that even after that, they're able to still go out and pray and stay bold and continue to preach. We just thank you so much and help us to be able to get outside of our comfort zone a little bit today. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.